Welcome back to the channel folks. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by and checking out the video. This is video number three in my survival kit series. I've already done a video on my pocket survival kit. I've already done a video on my backup survival kit for the snowmobile here, which is also very similar to a kit I keep in my vehicles. And this video is on my main survival kit. This is the kit I carry around 90 to 95% of the places that I go. I carry this just about everywhere. Everywhere I go hunting, fishing, ice fishing, snowmobiling, hiking. I carry this kit pretty much everywhere I go. The only places I don't carry it are super residential places that there's zero chances of getting lost. But outside of that, I pretty much carry it everywhere. Clock's in right around five pounds, but in my opinion, it's well worth it. We have really big woods up here in Maine. People get lost for days, weeks, months at a time. Unfortunately, we have several fatalities a year from people getting lost, you know, hiking, fishing, snowmobiling. So that kit right there gives me some peace of mind knowing if I ever get in a really bad pinch, that'll help me get through it. So I'm just gonna do kind of a quick breeze through. If you folks want me to expand on anything, leave a comment down in the comments and uh, I'll try my best to answer them or maybe do like another follow-up video if you guys have any thing you want me to follow up on but uh let's get right into this kit folks we have a five liter seal line uh, i think this is their heavy duty bag i can't remember the exact name of this it may be the discovery line i'll, I'll put it up on the video and most of the stuff i'm going to link down in the description uh, so you guys can check it out i'm going to leave some amazon links uh, this is a brand new bag i just swapped everything over from this seal line bag I've had this bag I don't know I wouldn't be surprised if it's for 10 years and you guys can see it's kind of ratty so I'll show you guys the top down view and I'll try my best to show you guys you know as I go but we're gonna take right from the top here first thing on top two heavy-duty zip ties and right on top is my Leatherman admittedly I usually carry this actually on my person like in a pocket but i put it in there just because this is always with me this is the leatherman wave no introduction needed very sturdy piece of gear i go everywhere with this and this leatherman here has been on literally every trip i've ever been on fishing ice fishing snowmobiling hunting this goes with me literally everywhere i go it's one of my favorite pieces of gear and next is a backup headlamp i carry a headlamp with a uh, big battery pack on the back, but this is a uh, black diamond. It's got a good battery life, and I like having a backup. And next up here is just a little uh, mid kit, and you can see right on top, we have some bleed stop. I'm not gonna tear this entire kit down. Band-aids, gauze, rolled gauze, pack gauze, stereo strips. I have some iodine pads, you know, for disinfecting basic medication, Benadryl, aspirin, ibuprofen. One thing I will tear out of this and show you is these sliver pullers here. These are the Uncle Bill's silver grippers. These little uh, sliver pullers here are almost invaluable. And slivers are one thing that a lot of people underestimate. If you have a sliver that gets infected, uh, that's no good. So in my opinion, these little guys are worth their weight in gold. And next up in this bag I have a whistle tied to my main compass that I use and I have a signal mirror and some flagging tape nice signal mirror here I recommend every survival kit have a signal mirror if you need to signal a helicopter or a search and rescue plane them are invaluable this is uh, just a, a Suntu compass um, I've had this I mean for years. I wouldn't be surprised if I've had this for almost 20 years. It always holds north fine. And just some flagging tape. You know, it's good to mark a trail. And just a loose roll of duct tape. I picked this up really cheap. Uh, just 50 cents. This is uh, 10 yards of duct tape. And I went with a fluorescent pink because basically that same principle. If you need a marker trail or, you know, you're lost, it's good to, you know, put some high visibility uh, markers out so any search party that's looking for you um, can pick up on them and we all know the things you can do with duct tape I mean are pretty much endless I'm not going to go through all them but uh, one thing people don't realize with duct tape is you can actually use these to help you get a fire going duct tape works really good 
as a tinder extender, you know, as a tinder flame extender. So just a little roll of duct tape there. Just a little roll of paracord. This is probably 20, 30 feet. I'll show you what else I have, but uh, just a small roll of that. We have the Survive Outside Longer bivy sack. No explanation needed there. And this is what I would call my main fire kit. I have some of these fire starting bricks. And in the actual kit here, I have a couple more of them fire starting bricks. And I have just a standard Bic lighter with some duct tape attached to a small section of Survive outside longer fire cord. Just a standard Bic lighter, but I think this is one of the best things to keep in a survival kit. If you're cold, hypothermic, your fingers aren't working well, this is a uh, quick, easy way to get a fire going. But with that, I would say I wouldn't 100% rely on this. If this gets wet or you dump your butane out by accident, this isn't going to work. So even though it's good to have, I wouldn't rely on it. And I would have, you know, at least two other methods of starting fire, which we'll kind of talk about right now. Uh, down in this kit, I have some stormproof matches. I have an open striker here, and there's a sealed striker right in there. Um, so we have uh, the lighter matches, and I got one more thing I'll talk about uh, a little um, down the road here in this video. All right, so GPS. This is my uh, tried and true GPS. This is an old Garmin Venture HC. This was one of, if not the first things I bought when I got out of college 16 years ago. And similar to my Leatherman, this has been on literally just about every trip I've ever been on. I use this all the time to check direction, mark waypoints. I am getting ready to uh, upgrade. This is kind of getting a little funny, turning off and on. So I am looking at the uh, Garmin 66i or the Garmin Explorer Pluses. So this is going to be getting retired here pretty soon. And uh, I didn't mention earlier, the other ones I'm looking at are the satellite communicators. So I'm currently looking at them as we speak. So what we have here is just another uh, piece of my fire kit. This here is some handmade fire starters. I have some of them dollar store, um, them circle, I think they're makeup removers. And I have some 91% isopropyl alcohol in here. You hit these with a spark, they light up instantly. So this is a, uh, a good fire starter. If you can't find any natural fire starters or it's soaking wet, this will work in just about any situation. And just some more fire making redundancy. We have a pack of stormproof matches, some cotton in the top, waterproof container, nothing fancy there. All right, let's go to this one. So this bag here has a full bottle of water purification tablets and we have about 10 feet of this reflective duct tape. I like to have a method of passive signaling. I touched on that earlier with the flagging tape and the pink duct tape. If I'm ever super, super lost, I want to have quite a trail going off of where I am just to alert any search party that may be out looking for me. And if they're looking at night, this reflective duct tape sticks out like a sore thumb. So that's why that's in there. This is just a roll of fluorescent orange duct tape. All right, let's get these two things out. So I have a little roll of uh, zip ties there. And this saw I have is brand new to the kit. This is the Baco Laplander. And I just did a review of this uh, a couple videos ago. And this is a real nice durable saw. So that's brand new to the kit. And next up, we have the tried and true Mora knife. No introduction needed here. These are all over YouTube. This is a phenomenal $30 knife. I think I actually paid like 27 on Amazon. This is a heavy duty. I can't remember if I said that. This thing is razor sharp, real nice knife. Perfect for the kit there. So I have a vacuum sealer bag that I sealed one end. I can fit about two gallons in here, just freestanding. If I want to roll the top and uh, you know tape it down, I could carry you know a gallon, gallon and a half, maybe you know a gallon and a quarter. So just a water bag there. And this is the Survivor filter, uh, collapsible bottle, I think they call it. 
Uh, just another way to transport water if needed. And that goes with this uh, water filter here. This is the matching survivor filter. Uh, this will actually screw onto here so you can fill this up with water, you know, and drink right from the filter there. We're getting down towards the end, folks. I have two high vis panels here. I got these at Hobby Lobby. These are like a dollar a piece. So uh, these are similar to duct tape. Um, many uses for these. You know, my main usage is for signaling and you can make uh, char cloth out of these. You can do basic water filtration with these. It's not gonna filter down, you know, to the stuff that'll make you sick, but you know, you can do basic water filtration with these. You know, if you needed to improvise a hat, you could make a hat out of these. If you needed to improvise a face shield, you could use it for that. Many uses for that there. And next up, I keep just this little roll of uh, duct tape, electrical tape, and some more flagon tape. I keep that in this hole here, so that's nice and neat. This is a full roll of bank line. So there's 275 feet of bank line here. And I got quite a um, length of that same survive outside longer fire cord. I actually like this stuff better than paracord. So that's why I put this entire thing in here. If you guys can see down there, we're almost, we're almost to the end. So I don't feel like any survival kit is complete without a way of boiling water. This is the Stanley Adventure Cup. Uh, this is stainless steel. You can boil water in this, purify water, you know, put it in the, you know, water collection things that I already have. Uh, just real handy to have and I do keep some gear in here as well and of course the wind is picking up so in there I keep a battery bank it's good to have some extra battery and this is a bag of honey sticks the orange are honey sticks and the white is salt so just a pack of quick calories you know if needed I have a fishing kit in here this kind of looks messy but this is a selection of hand tied flies. I tied up some woolly buggers. I tied up some tiny tungsten jigs. Just in case I can't find a natural bait, it's good to have some, some pre-tied stuff. I have five of these liquid IV packets. These are just some quick uh, energy calories, you know, basic vitamins, minerals, nutrients. Uh, so in case, you know, I'm in a pinch, you know, these are good to have right on hand. And next up is more fire making redundancy. And what we have here is the Aversell ferro rod kit. This came with two of these and one of these here. This is a hemp cord with baffle tube. You uh, fluff this up on the end, hit it with a spark and it lights right up. I put some duct tape on it just in case I happen to drop it. It'll be good to have, you know, this a little more high vis. Um, you know, I can't stress it enough. If you don't know how to use a ferro rod, I highly suggest learning how to. If your lighter ever goes down, your matches get wet, this ferro rod will still work. In rain, snow, doesn't matter, this will still throw a spark. I highly recommend that everybody gets to know how to use a ferro rod there. And in that same kit are some uh, homemade fire starters. These are them same makeup removers. These ones are dipped in wax. These ones here are rubbed down with Vaseline, uh, petroleum jelly. So just, a so just a couple different options on getting fire going there if you don't have any natural tinder. All right, spare batteries for my headlamp and GPS, AA and AAA. Basic sewing kit, nothing fancy, two needles, some sewing thread space blanket and the last two things in the kit a little uh, section of wire for gear repairs in case I need to do some small animal trapping and last thing is uh, some cut down paper with a couple pencils cut in half you know good to keep track of some notes some directions some land and terrain features if you're super lost you can write a note hang it up on a tree with some of this high-vis stuff and a search party may come across it and give them some uh, information that you're in the area. Um, and that is it, folks. And just real quick, I wanted to say that I usually carry 
some freeze-dried meals in my bag with me wherever I go. I don't have enough room to put them in the kit, but I do carry them usually um, in a bag with me. And I also carry some of these food ration bars. Uh, just real quick, easy calories. You know, if I ever need them, they're right there. They're real easy. Um, like I said, they, they don't fit in the kit, but I do carry them in a the bag with me. You know, most everywhere I go, you know, especially if I'm snowmobiling or I'm going off the beaten path, I always carry these. And that is the kit, folks. Like I said, it's a pretty sturdy one. Clocks in right around five pounds, but in my opinion, it's well worth it. We have really big woods up here in Maine. People get lost for days, weeks, months at a time. Unfortunately, we have several fatalities a year from people getting lost, you know, hiking, fishing, snowmobiling. So that kit right there gives me some peace of mind knowing if I ever get in a really bad pinch, that'll help me get through it. Maybe more than some bring, you know, maybe less than some bring, but that's what I carry everywhere I go. Like I said, 90 to 95% of the places I bring that exact kit right there. If you folks have any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you guys would add something, take something away, feel free to leave that in the comments. Sorry if this was a long one, folks. I tried to keep it as short as I could. But we're going to wrap it up there, folks. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one.